All right, what is up everybody? Today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about what I have in my camera bag, what I use it for, and why I have it. Then later on I'll be showing how I can afford all this stupid expensive gear at such a young age. All right, let's start with my camera. So I use a Canon 80D, which is the best DSLR in Canon's mid-level camera series. I freaking love this thing. I use it because of its insanely fast autofocus and its ability to shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's a super great little camera, not only for video, but for photos too. It cost me a total of $1,400 second hand with the 18 to 135 lens. I've had absolutely no issues with it so far, and because it's made by Canon, it has a wide variety of cheaper lenses. And I bought it second hand for $1,400, but the brand new price of it is $2,400 with the lens I got it with. All right, moving on to lenses. So the first lens I have is the 18 to 135 that I mentioned earlier. This lens came with my ADD and I actually really like it. It's the lens I use when I'm not sure which lens I should be using because it has a wide variety of focal lengths. 18 millimeters is wide enough to vlog with and anywhere between 75 to 135 millimeters I can actually get really good bulk out of it. It's what I shoot most of my B-roll with since it is such a diverse lens. And the price new is $800 and it actually came with my ADD so it's kind of free. Does that count as being, no it doesn't count as being free. The second lens I have is my 10-18. to This is the lens I use for vlogging since, as you can see, it starts wide and gets even wider. This is super useful, especially in enclosed spaces, since a lot more of the scene is shown. For an example, in a car with the 18-135, to you can only see me. But if I throw on the 10-18 to when the camera is in the exact same spot, a lot more of the setting is shown. Not only does this lens do a great job of providing the viewer with more of the setting, but it actually acts as a stabilizer because it's so wide. The price new is $440 and I bought it for 320 used. Now, my third and last lens is the 50 millimeter. It is the polar opposite of the 10 to 18. It's a super close up cropped in lens, but it can get a ton of bokeh, which is something that the 10 to 18 cannot. However, because it's so cropped in, it's really hard to get smooth footage, so I use this lens more for photography than for video. I actually bought this brand new because it is a cheaper lens, so it was $200 new, and I bought it for $200. All right, moving on to my mic. I use the Rode Micro. It has an awesome sound quality and came with a wind filter to get rid of ambient wind noise. You know that sound? Yeah, you know, it, it gets rid of that. Also, it's a directional microphone, which means anything in front of it sounds amazing, but anything behind it sounds like it's in another room. This is actually super useful when I'm in crowded areas since it cancels out a lot of the ambient noise in the room. And price new is $100, but Will and JC got it for me as a Christmas present because that's all I asked for. Thanks guys, that, that means a lot. Moving on to my tripod. So I use the Gorillapod 5K with the ball head attachment. And honestly, I really love this thing. It's such an awesome tool to get more dynamic, interesting angles for your videos. I used to bring a tripod everywhere, but now I just exclusively bring this. I can use it to get pretty much any camera angle I get. Like you can see. This is set up on a tree, like I, I have my Gorilla Pod wrapped around a tree right now to get this shot. Since it adds a little bit of weight to the bottom, it kind of functions as a stabilizer sometimes, so it's actually pretty useful. And I bought this new off Amazon, so it's 200 and I got it for 200. Moving on to my drone. Now, as you guys know, I recently bought a DJI Mavic Pro and I'm super happy with it. As it allows me to show the setting in 4K like I never could have before, and come on, let's be real, drone shots are really sick. Just Enjoy 18 seconds of drone shots right here. Anyways, this thing is super light and it folds out to be smaller than my actual camera, which is incredible. And the price new is $1,300, which is just for the body and controller, and I got it for $950 with the drone and controller, two extra batteries, this charging unit, extra props, ND filters. I got a really good deal. All right, as I'm editing this, I realized I forgot arguably the most important of equipment that I carry around, and that is my laptop, everything I edit with. So I actually recently made the switch from PC to Mac, from Premiere to Final Cut, and so far I'm really loving it. I love how the software is made directly for the hardware. Everything just runs super smooth, 
And although Premiere was great, I just think Final Cut's a little smoother, better, and faster. And the MacBook I have is a 2014 MacBook Pro Retina model, which has surprisingly crazy specs and is super light, durable, and handles any program I've thrown in it so far. It's a lot more versatile than my old laptop, while retaining similar, if not better, specs. And the price new is $2,600, but I got it for just $1,300, so it was an awesome purchase. Well, there you have it. Everything I carry around in my camera bag. But how can I afford it? Well, that comes down to three main ways. Working, buying secondhand, and simply asking for it. I worked all of last summer and this summer at Evolve Camps where I teach kids how to ride scooters. It's amazing. I highly recommend you check it out right here. Also, I buy all my gear secondhand, which is a lot cheaper and actually quite reliable if you know what you're looking for. And finally, I pretty much only ask for money or camera gear for Christmas or birthdays. For example, like for Christmas, I got the Nifty 50. For my birthday, Jason Will got me a lens. It's just little things, asking for the little things. And that's it. I hope this helped you guys find a way to get your gear at a cheaper price. That's what I did. So um, I'll see you guys in the next one.